Yasna 53, this Gata, unlike all the others, cannot be by Zarathustra. He is actually mentioned in it as having been granted eternal bliss, as has been remarked by Newberg, Religion, in page 151. The Gata might be called the marriage Gata. It seems indeed to have been pronounced in the course of a nuptial ceremony. <clears throat> It is traditionally considered that the bride is named in stanza two, Parasista Zarathustra's younger daughter. But this cannot be done without doing violence to the syntax. If the text is taken as it is, i.e., Parasista, as the nominative, this person has to be excluded from the part. Besides, it would be rather strange to name the bride and not the husband. But this being so, what is Parasista doing in the ceremony? According to H.S. Newberg, she has become a sort of tutelary deity of marriage. I do not think it is necessary to go so far. Could not this daughter of the prophet have personally presided over the nuptials? According to this of you, the connection of the idea between the three first stanzas is clearly apparent. The first commemoration of Zarathustra has opened the path of beautitude. To those who practice his religion, stanza two recalls the destiny of this religion, which he has founded, is henceforth in the hands of the Prince Vistaspa, of the Freya Sastra, and the son of the prophet Shvetama, the sister of the latter, Zarathustra's daughter, Perasista, is quite naturally added to these, successors of the prophet in stanza three. Her pious person presides over the marriage because it must be seen as symbolical renewal of the alliance with the divine triad which her father has preached. Patasista therefore exhorts the young bride to wise revolutions and to conduct ruled by devotion. 3. 1. The best possession of Zarathustra Shukama has been revealed. It is the wise Lord has granted through the right eternal bliss to him and all those who have observed and practiced the words and deeds of his good religion. 2. By the thought of him, by the words and deeds, shall the Prince Vitashma and Svitama, Zarathustra's son, and Freya Sastra strive willingly to please the wise men and to pray in his praise, even making the past the religion of the Savior, which the Lord has ordained. 3. And this is Juan Parashusta, descendant of Hekes Tashpa, the Shvitamid, Zarathustra's youngest daughter, has destined for thee to renew the bond with a good mind, righteousness, and the wise one. Then take counsel with thy reason, and wisely carry out the holiest deeds of devotion. The bride promises to have towards the husband, Juan Pedersusta, is intended for the feelings to the father and to the husband, and as much as they are her family and her herdsmen, and act according to righteousness, so she calls blessing of the Lord down on him for his good conscience for it. The officiating priest, in his turn addresses all the listeners as well as the young people. He first states that the essentials of the doctrine alluding to the wise one as Zarathustra did at the beginning of the sermon in Gatha 45. By the use of the verb man, da, then naming the other entities with which him form the triad, their zeal for the triad will make their happiness and nothing else the happiness which the followers of the evil appear to enjoy must be rejected. For these people destroy their bliss, their spiritual life, and having despised righteousness, they shall receive meager pittance and cry, Woe! 5 through 6. The faithful, on the other hand, as long as an ardent zeal fills their marrow, they shall enjoy the benefit of the sacrament, the renewed alliance of the Lord's, see of stanza 5, which, however, destroys the wicked one, and would destroy them too if they were unfaithful. <coughs> 4. The bride, zealously I will prefer him as righteousness, one honors her father and her husband if they be bound as husband and as family. May the wise Lord forever grant the wondrous gift of his conscience. 5. The priest, for the young brides do I preach and for you. Take the doctrines for your wisdom and understand them in your soul, in your yearning towards a life of good mind. Be with each other in your zeal for righteousness, for in this shall you be your reward. 6. Thus truly, O men and women. You shall forgo that happiness with which you shall see a follower of evil and joy. Crying woe, they shall receive meager penance, the wicked ones. They shall be deprived of bliss, who despise righteousness. Thus do you destroy yourselves, the spiritual existence. 7. 
but yours. While the most steadfast zeal burns in your flesh, shall be the blessing of the sacrament, where the spirit of the wicked one is better than destroyed. So you abandon the sacrament. Woe shall be your last word. The two last stanzas call punishment and destruction upon the evildoers, and at once may the Almighty Lord, with help of the rulers, bring them confusion, blood, and death, on strength, peace, happiness to the village. Eight. Where are they, the rulers? Where is the Lord who shall take this life and liberty, as in Yasna 46? of these people who have chosen the evil part and devoted themselves to the corruption, whether by seeking harm to upright men, or by despising righteousness, or by having condemned themselves by their crimes. The wise one has power to favor him who lives uprightly and relies on him as a dependent. C.F. Yasna 34, 5, on his Lord and Master. 8. Let thus the evildoers be deceived, and let them all perish with wailing. With the help of the good rulers, may the Almighty bring death and blood upon them, but peace to the happy villages. Let the Almighty confound them and bind them in death, and let it be soon. 9. Corruption fastens on the unbelievers, they who seek to humble the upright, they who despise righteousness, who have doomed their souls. Where is the righteous Lord who shall strip them of life and liberty, O wise one? Thine is the dominion, to give the needy one who lives uprightly the better part.